Anytime you can save time, you save your customers money, you have made a customer very happy. Let's begin by looking at how the short finder works. In a circuit, power flows from the battery through a fuse to a load. The load is the component of the vehicle that is being powered by the circuit and could be anything from a light bulb to a door buzzer. The circuit is safely grounded after it powers the load. A short happens when damage to the circuit wiring causes the power to ground to the car body before it reaches the load. When the short occurs, the fuse blows to cut off power to the circuit and the load will stop functioning. The short finder works by using a signal generator to send a signal down the same path as the power flow. Because the signal follows the path of least resistance, it will flow only to the short and will terminate at the point of the short. Other branches of that circuit will not receive any of the signal. Then you use a receiver to trace the signal. A tone and a light indicate when the receiver is picking up the signal. When the signal stops, you've found the short. Simple, fast, accurate. All that is required to get results with the short finder is for you to carefully follow the easy, logical steps outlined in this 12-step procedure. One word of caution, do not use this or any tool on an airbag system unless specifically instructed to do so by the manufacturers. Let's look at each step carefully. Step one is to verify the customer's complaint by recreating the short. If the fuse is blown, the problem is a short. If the fuse is not blown, no short is present. To start, turn the ignition key on and replace the blown fuse. Operate the switches on that circuit until the fuse blows. When the fuse blows, you are electrically connected to the short. Keep that switch closed to maintain the electrical connection to the short. It is vital to maintain this electrical connection. Without it, the short finder will not be able to locate the short. Step two is to identify the load side of the fuse block, because that is where you need to attach the signal generator. Remove the blown fuse, and using a standard test light, find the load side of the circuit at the fuse block. The load side is not getting power from the battery and does not illuminate the test light. Step three is to remove power from the circuit. As a courtesy to your customer, always record the radio presets and reset the clock when you're through. By disconnecting power to everything in the vehicle, you eliminate the possibility of picking up false signals from other circuits. To prevent the danger of a short when disconnecting the battery, remove the negative cable first, then disconnect the positive cable. Reconnect the negative cable before moving to the next step. Step four is to connect the signal generator. Attach the red lead of the signal generator to the positive post of the battery. Then attach the black lead to the load side of the fuse block that you identified earlier, and the signal generator is connected. Use the extension lead if the fuse block is too far away from the battery to connect directly. Step five is to confirm that the signal generator is electrically connected to the short. Because you have already recreated the short, both the green and yellow lights on the signal generator will be lit and you can proceed to the next step. If only the green light is lit, the signal generator is properly connected, but no short is present. Recreate the short again by operating the switches on the circuit until the yellow light is lit. If no lights are lit, the signal generator is not properly connected. Check the connection of both leads. You should proceed to the next step only when both the green and yellow lights on the signal generator are lit, indicating that the short is continually present and the signal generator is electrically connected to the short. Step six is to look at the shop manual for the vehicle to determine how the circuit is laid out, the route it takes through the vehicle, and what loads are on that circuit. It is important to note all incandescent lights on the circuit. Step seven 
is to disconnect all incandescent lights on the circuit. Incandescent lights, if left connected, can cause a false short reading on both the signal generator and the receiver. As you disconnect the incandescent lights, recheck the green and yellow lights on the signal generator to make sure they are still lit, indicating that the short is still present. Again, you should proceed to the next step only if both the green and yellow lights are lit. Step 8 is to use the receiver to locate the short. To begin using the receiver, turn it on by pressing the power switch. The green light on the receiver will come on. Then set the sensitivity switch to high for the initial search. Hold the probe over the signal generator to verify that it is receiving a signal. Be sure to hold the probe at a right angle to the circuit so the receiver can pick up the signal properly. You should hear the signal tone and the red light on the receiver should be lit. Starting from the signal generator, trace the wire harness of the circuit until the signal stops. The signal will stop in the general area of the short. Set the sensitivity switch to low for the narrow search and carefully scan the area of the short again with the probe. You should be able to pinpoint within inches the area you need to search for the short. Step 9 is to confirm the location of the short by sending the signal from the load connection on the other side of the short. Disconnect the signal generator from the load side of the fuse block and reconnect it at the load connection. Check to make sure that both lights are lit on the signal generator, indicating that you are electrically connected to the short again. Use the receiver to trace the signal from the signal generator back to the short location. The signal should stop at the same place as before, confirming that you have located the short. Step 10 is to visually inspect the wire harness in the short location. Look for visible damage to the wire. Step 11 is to make the repair to the damaged wire. When you finish the repair, replace the fuse. Next, reconnect the battery, making sure to first disconnect the negative cable before reconnecting the positive cable. Then, reconnect all the loads on the circuit. Step 12 is to verify the repair by recreating the short conditions without blowing the fuse. Every step in the procedure is crucial, so it's important to follow each one carefully.